This video was made possible by Morning Brew. Does your remote control have this button? If you press it, you will see Teletext, an additional layer to classic linear TV. While Teletext never existed in some countries and has been outdated in others years ago, it is still popular in many places today, and it is a fascinating example of a technology that, despite groundbreaking changes in other areas of media consumption, has remained this unchanged zombie from a different time. This is the story of Teletext. Teletext was inspired by the technical possibilities of the time, as it was made possible by utilizing a gap in the transmission of the television signal. CRT television sets work using an electron gun that shoots out a beam of electrons towards a screen. These electrons can be aimed precisely using a magnetic field, resulting in a directed beam that scans across the screen. As it does so, the intensity of the beam varies, and since the electrons make the phosphor screen light up accordingly, an image is produced. There are different types of broadcasting formats around the world. In the UK, where Teletext was invented, PAL was used, which changes the image 25 times per second, creating the illusion of movement, what we call video. This PAL system uses 625 lines horizontally. However, only 576 lines are actually used to transmit the image. The remaining lines, the invisible gap so to say, is used by the television to prepare itself to receive the next image. In the 1970s, the idea of using this gap in order to provide viewers with additional information that would complement television arose in the United Kingdom. The publicly funded BBC was interested in using such a system in order to provide subtitles for their program, and in 1974 the station adopted CFAX, the world's first teletext. The viewer can select certain pages by entering numbers on the remote control. The technology is limited to a certain number of pages, from the main page 100 to a maximum of 899. The system became a huge success, and gradually more countries started adapting this new British invention, which the UK was quite proud of. Britain is far ahead of the rest of the world in this business of teletext. That is, providing written information such as news, weather, sports results, or even special pictures on our home TV screens. A recent survey showed that 98% of all teletext and view data installations throughout the world use British technology. And that's something we can all be very proud of. Within a decade, almost every television model available came with the option of having a decoder that is used to receive teletext. While in the early days of teletext, various different systems coexisted, such as Antiotext in France, which was developed parallel to CFAX, all different systems could eventually be standardized to world system teletext, clearing the way for the colorful decades of teletext to begin. At a time when personal computers at homes were still far from widespread, Teletext already allowed people to quickly access information such as up-to-date stock prices, the weather forecast, all sorts of sports results and live tickers, as well as departure and arrival information from the local airports. But especially, Teletext became popular for following current news events. US chemical waste will be processed in South Wales, providing there is no abnormal risk, says Mr. Shaw. Hmm. Mm. That's going to be interesting. Instead of waiting for news shows to appear on television or a radio, you could follow the latest up-to-date news. A new way to consume, as the user of Teletext was an active determiner of the content that is shown on the screen, clicking from page to page at their own pace. And news reports came in much faster than people were used to, which sometimes resulted in a few more errors as well. Stanley, good morning. Morning. What's your question, please? Well, I'm a bit amazed at the spelling and grammatical errors that occur. 
Well, everybody makes spelling mistakes. You have to face the fact that our sports news is incredibly fast. It's going on over here at the moment. So it's and my friend there in the pink shirt whose fault it is if there's yeah. a mistake, is it? Well, that, well that's <laughs> Kevin, and he's typing it in now. Yes. And if he makes a mistake, Mr Bradshaw will see it. Though the internet works by a computer sending requests to receive information, the transmission of teletext is linked to the television picture. Since only a small amount of data fits into each individual blanking interval, the pages are transmitted in an endless loop. So if you as a viewer want to look at a certain teletext page, you may have to wait a while until the data is transmitted via the television signal. Sometimes that can take a long time. More modern devices, on the other hand, have memory built in, which continuously saves all the pages in the background, which in turn enables quick selection. Teletext is not a pure text medium. Broadcasters also use the technology to display graphics, with a very unique look. Teletext has a fixed number of columns and rows in which characters are displayed. In addition to the usual text characters, there are also block characters. By combining these blocks, graphics can be displayed. The images shown are therefore always made up of a mosaic of characters, and a lot of skill is required to achieve recognizable images using this technique. This process may also be reminiscent of so-called text art, which later became popular in chat groups on the internet. In addition to the latest news, Teletext is also used to provide additional information about the program. For example, what show is on next, and it can even be an additional source of income for TV stations. Oftentimes, competitions and lotteries are advertised in which viewers can take part via SMS. Individual pages are also sold off as complete advertising space, sometimes used by larger corporations, oftentimes used by telephone erotic hotlines. Some broadcasters also allow viewers to have their own text messages displayed on teletext by them sending an SMS to a number that charges them a fee. Used by people to greet their friends, send romantic messages to their partners, advertise their own business, or share anything else with the world. In addition to the content increasing in variety, Teletext technology was also further developed. Teletext level 1.5 allowed the reception of additional characters for other languages, as well as more special characters. And with Teletext 2.5, the color palette was increased to now offer 4016 different colors. And the resolution of the image content is significantly higher, which is primarily used by TV stations for their logos. However, this standard is not particularly widespread, for a number of different reasons. On one hand, for pages with complex high-resolution content, it is necessary to transmit the data over several passes through the television signals, which can further lengthen the waiting times for each page. In addition, the teletext can only be received with a corresponding new decoder, which is why it is necessary to also keep broadcasting the graphics with the lower resolution in order to guarantee a proper display on any TV set, old or new. Teletext was most successful in Europe, where in some countries virtually every TV channel had its own Teletext service. But in countries outside Europe, the technology didn't spread as easily. In the United States, for example, NBC and CBS began offering Teletext in 1984. However, they did not rely on the world system teletext standard used in Europe, but rather used their own new standard, NABTS. This system, from the start, was able to display much more detailed graphics such as the station logos. The disadvantage, however, was that a special decoder was necessary, which was significantly more expensive than those used in Europe. In addition, the television manufacturers only offered these decoders in those places where the broadcasters already offered teletext, which in turn meant that neither television manufacturers nor broadcasters were willing to take the first step. Later, some stations started further attempts, this time using the British standard. For example, Electra Teletext, which was broadcasted by various US TV stations for 12 years. 
Ultimately, however, it didn't prevail. The FCC, an agency regulating television in the US, mandated that by 1993, new TV sets sold needed to be able to display closed captions. TV manufacturers therefore included closed caption decoders, and teletext decoding was scrapped. A decline in the use of teletext can also be seen in many countries where teletext once was very popular. After two very successful decades for teletext, a difficult time of change began. Over the course of the 1990s, the internet began to make its way into private households on a large scale. From the beginning it also competed with teletext, over which the internet was technically clearly superior. And at the turn of the millennium, not only did the internet lead to digitization, but television would also be brought into a new era. In what is perhaps the biggest transformation in the history of television, nations worldwide started transitioning from analog broadcasting to digital TV. A piece of broadcasting history is about to be made here. The rest of the UK is going to follow suit and by 2012 the whole of the United Kingdom will have gone digital. The switchover was necessary at a time when modern workflows in video and sound are completely digitized. And it made it possible for people to receive a greater number of different TV programs, which could be transmitted in better quality. For digital TV, a lower frequency range is necessary. With the shutdown of analog transmission, those frequencies could then be used for 4G internet. As time-consuming as the switchover was, it made it possible for television to further develop in many different ways. The long-existing HD standard was finally able to really become the norm. And stations developed alternatives to teletext that offered more capabilities. It is possible to continue teletext even if the mode of transmission were to change. But for many broadcasters it seemed much more appropriate to use this digital transition in order to bury this outdated technology as well. The BBC fully replaced CFAX with its red button service, a more capable digital version of the same idea, with a design that isn't as limited. When the last analog signal in the UK was switched off in Northern Ireland on October 23, 2012, CFAX the world's first teletext also ended its service, after 38 years of operation. Analogue television has seen many technological advances and additions since the days of Baird and Marconi. Now though, we enter a new era of broadcasting, as this becomes a fully digital UK. From the Analogue BBC television service, good night and goodbye. In this digital age, many people seem to find a new appreciation and awareness for the unique look and feel of teletext. In an effort to save teletext in the UK, fans of the discontinued BBC CFAX have even created their own crowdsourced version called TFAX, which can be accessed using a Raspberry Pi computer that feeds the signal to any home TV. Though these enthusiast projects are all that's left in the home country of Teletext, in many other European countries, Teletext has actually survived the digital transformation. It is transmitted digitally through cable, or even using the internet for the growing number of people that receive television through IPTV. Really, there is no technical reason to keep this blocky look, to not expand what Teletext can do. But the mixed reception of Teletext alternatives has shown that many people don't want Teletext to change. Since Teletext has survived the big disruptions of the digital switchover in so many countries, what really should stop it? And fans of Teletext have even created artwork using it. In order to advocate for the artistic value in Teletext, the International Teletext Art Festival was launched, which cooperates with the public broadcasters in Austria, Germany and Finland. The broadcasters made certain pages of their teletext available for this special festival, which every television viewer could attend at home. 
In addition, artists created live teletext art as part of an exhibition in Linz, which was projected onto large screens. Visitors could also take part in this exhibition themselves and create their own artwork. Teletext has made it into the digital age, without even having to adapt. Some broadcasters even offer their Teletext content available on web browsers and apps, but they still display it in this mock-up design of the original Teletext, because that's what people expect. And I think there's something to be learned from this popularity. Technical limitations can often appear as a hindrance for designers that limits the experience that they can create for us consumers. But I think that Teletext is a good example that if the constraints of a medium are truly embraced, the result can be a unique visual language that fits extraordinarily well. More technical possibilities can lead to new ways for designers and artists to express themselves, but it's not the only way. Technical limitations also can inspire creativity. When it comes to my appreciation of Teletext, a lot of nostalgia may have played a role. But I think it still can be interesting to look at these technology cycles. When Teletext was introduced, personal computers were not present in households. But Teletext was a precursor of a near future in which information could be accessed in real time. And today, this future has come. And Teletext is attracting a renewed interest for its aesthetic, from artists such as Dan Fairmont, who says, To me, it will always represent the future, specifically that predicted by countless 80s sci-tech films and TV shows. Though they might not have been 100% correct, Teletext does continue to thrive as a counterpart to the internet. While Teletext changed the way we consume information 40 years ago, today there are also new ways to stay better informed about what goes on in the world. For example, every morning I check out the short daily briefing by this video sponsor Morning Brew. How it works is you register once, completely free, and from then on receive an email every morning which contains a well-researched overview of what's happening in the fields of business, technology, and other news. Especially when it comes to business news, in the past I found it quite difficult to keep myself in the loop and follow developments. With Morning Brew's newsletter, I know what goes on at the moment, and over time I found that I was more aware of bigger changes and trends. Best of all, Morning Brew is completely free. So all you have to do is click on the link in the description, enter an email address, and you're set. From then on, not only do you support my channel for free, you also get the fantastic daily news overview to stay well informed.